my name is Sam Turner and I am one half of Turner's Trains. Um, and for the first time actually, um, I'm in front of the camera rather than behind the camera. Um, the other half of uh, Turner's Trains is in fact my dad, but he is not on camera today. Hello. Um, but yeah, as you see, I am in front of uh, Brentford Junction, um, one of our layouts here at uh, Turner's Trains. Uh, and I'm here to tell you a, a bit about the layout. So yeah, we're going to take a step back from our normal uh, vintage remakes of, uh, of uh, classic railway videos um, as such and uh, to bring you a kind of a new type of video, um, a video about our layout, about the history of our layout. Um, so uh, Brentford Junction is actually the, uh, the, the kind of the I guess the uh, the vision of my dad. Um, it's taken three years of work uh, to to get to this stage, um, but in fact, uh, it's only as I said, only one of our layouts. Um, I say one of our layouts. There's a, there's a slight technicality. Um, we have two main layouts in total, but they're actually one big layout. With uh, we've got Brentford Junction on this side, um, and then Cowley Junction on the other side, and they're actually connected by a uh, I guess an open scenic break, you could call it. Um, and a uh, fiddle yard. So they're one layout, but kind of we like to, we like to call them one layout due to the separation of uh, locations, um, basically. So Brentford Junction is a semi-fictional outer London Southern Railway station based in the Big Four era. The layout includes a four-platform station in an Art Deco style, a suburb city scene featuring a row of shops and a tooling factory aptly named Turning Machining Limited, a carriage siding a two-road engine shed and a substation and a, lastly it features a row of terrace housing. All of the features amalgamate to make the layout feel very much like 1930s suburban London with that southern electric theme running through. So that was a real quick layout tour of uh, Brentford Junction. As you can see, we've got the uh, HAL running and the uh, M7 running today on the track, uh, representing some suburban uh, passenger services. Um, but yeah, it was a really quick uh, layout tour. Um, but now it's time to explain a bit about the history behind Brentford Junction, because though the vision of Brentford Junction creatively may have been my dad's. Um, the, vision, the, the vision, I guess, historically, and why it's called Brentford Junction and where it is, is more to do with me. The aim of this layout was to provide an urban station location that could have historically and realistically been served by the Southern Railway and the Great Western Railway. So with this objective in mind, I set about my research. Using rail maps online, I identified the possible locations. West London, specifically Brentford. The Southern Railway had a station in Brentford owing to the LSWR, one of its constituent companies, building a branch line between Barnes and Hounslow in 1850, which connected Brentford in between. The GWR also had a station in Brentford, having built a branch to its Great Western Railway-owned Brentford docks on the Thames in 1859. Incidentally, this was the last railway line engineered by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Though the GWR and Southern Lines crossed each other, at no point in history was there ever actually a connecting junction between the two lines. Well, this is till now in our alternative reality. I think it's time for a map. So the map on screen at the moment shows the alignment of the rail network in West London circa 1930s. As is evident, there was no Brentford Junction. And note as well, the Brentford branch owned by the Great Western starts from Southall. Now on screen you see the alternative history. So in this new reality that Brentford Junction exists, the Great Western, instead of branching out at South Hull, chose to build their Brentford Docks line from South Acton, to allow for better passenger services to Paddington. And in conjunction with the LSWR, at the time, despite their virulent competition, they decided to build a junction station at Brentford, where the Great Western would cross the Southern Line. This station would be run by the Southern Railway, but the GWR would be able to have running rights along the line and serve passenger services to the station. 
Note in this reality as well, due to the uh, building of Brentford Junction by the two companies, it would see the closure of southern, the Southern Railways, or at the time the LSWR's rail, um, railways, of Brentford Station and Sion Road Station. Also, note that the Great Western Branch Line um, intermediate stations would actually also actually also change as well from Thrumpers Cross Halt to South Ealing, which is actually on the district line, which is not shown on this map. You are also wondering why the LMS features on this track diagram. Well, me and my dad have had long debates um, poring over Wikipedia articles and rail maps online. To, to discussing whether we should include the LMS on our li layout at all, um, and I, I know it's exciting. Um, and well, history suggests that the LMS could have realistically had a presence in Brentford as well. Um, I, I hope to do a whole no another video about the LMS in Brentford. Um, but just to give a quick, quick, su quick syn synopsis about it, there was a, a stretch of line um, between Wilson Junction and Kew, which is now part of the Overground, that we believe the LMS would have had control of during the grouping era. Um, we're not sure whether they ever ran passenger services along the line, or whether it was solely used for freight, but in our reality, the LMS would have used the line for passengers from Wilson Junction down to Kew and beyond into Brentford Junction to connect with the other company's services. Um, however, we don't actually have any LMS engines um, or rolling stock to run at the moment, so they won't be featuring on our layouts for now, but uh, watch this space. But yeah, that roughly uh, brings uh, the history of Brentford Junction to... Uh, to a close. So I think that's enough history for one video. I think it's time to have a watch of some trains passing through Brentford Junction. So yeah, we're back at Brentford Junction now, um, and all I can say is really thank you for watching. We're hoping to do another video like this for the Cowley Junction side um, in the new future, as well as some other videos which um, might include a new uh, modern image railway uh, layout build, as well as some more uh, vintage remakes of, uh, of, of classic uh, film, railway films. Um, actually, on that note, if you know of any uh, classic railway films that you'd like us to, to make, please do leave a comment down below and let us know where you found these films and where we can find them, because um, we're always trying to find uh, new kind of vintage films. Because, as of course, as some of you may know, um, during lockdown, this is the whole channel came about by uh, kind of making remix, um, remakes of, um, of vintage railway films. Um, but sorry, I'm going off topic here a bit. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I uh, really in hope you enjoyed uh, uh, watching it as much as uh, we have enjoyed uh, kind of modelling our, our Brentford uh, Junction and uh, researching the history um, surrounding it. Um, and I just want to say, just enjoy railway modelling uh, for this uh, Christmas period, well I say it's Christmas, Christmas is over now, for this winter period. Um, enjoy researching uh, the history of your model now, if that's uh, what interests you like uh, it does for me. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of brings this uh, video to a close. Uh, please do like uh, this video and uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're a very new channel um, and we're very acutely aware of all the great content already out there in the railway modelling community. We just hope we can uh, bring something different to the table as such as well with uh, this type of video. But yeah, thank you for uh, watching and we'll uh, uh, see you next time.